Thank you everyone for joining our talk on managing the threat of the Asian Hornet in Ireland. This is uh, an event that's been run as part of the Asian Hornet Week in Ireland. The Asian Hornet Week is the first time that we're running such an event in Ireland, uh, but it was originally created by the British Beekeepers Association in 2017. So we're just trying to get more information out about the Asian Hornet and what we're doing in Ireland. Today we're joined by guest speakers Colette O'Flynn. She's an invasive species officer from the National Biodiversity Data Centre. Brian Nelson, who's an invertebrate ecologist and researcher at the National Parks and Wildlife Services and Declan Hardy, who's the Agriculture Inspector at the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. So before they give their presentations, I just want to jump in and give a, a brief overview of the Atlantic Positive Project and the research that we're doing in Ireland at the moment. Atlantic Positive is an interreg project, meaning we're working with over 10 universities and research institutes across the Atlantic area. We're also working with 21 plus partners such as government beekeeper associations and other research institutes and universities. And our main aim is to combat the spread and impact of the Asian Hornet in the Atlantic area. But why do we need to do this? Well, the Asian Hornet is a social wasp that's native to Asia. However, it was introduced accidentally to Europe in 2004, where it quickly spread to neighbouring countries. And the Asian Hornet is a ferocious predator of pollinators, namely honeybees and other insects. Asian Hornets not only impact pollinator behaviour and subsequently pollinator services and biodiversity, but they also have the potential to impact economic sector and human health and well-being. Our research partners in Europe, where the Asian Hornet is well established, are looking at different aspects of the Asian Hornet, such as its diet, its life cycle and its impact on native pollinators and apiaries as well as how to minimize or mitigate those impacts. And they're also looking at how to trap, bait, and track the Asian Hornet as a method of control. However, in Ireland, we don't have the Asian Hornet. There was a single occurrence um, at the beginning of this year. However, it is not established here. So what we're interested in looking at is the risk of the Asian Hornet establishing in Ireland. An invasion isn't as simple as, a, as an invasive species getting here. There's a lot of steps in between. So what we want to look at is the environmental envelope of Ireland, such as our habitat and our food availability, and you know the diet and life cycle and needs of an Asian hornet to see if they overlap and if Ireland is suitable. We're also designing a universal response strategy with our European partners. This will take into account the different stages of invasion of every country involved. And it's, uh, it's just a way for us basically to prepare and to learn from the lessons of countries that already have the Asian Hornet. A major part of our project and the work that we do is providing training and education to beekeepers and other stakeholders. We did run a beekeeper survey earlier this year that was able to help us tailor our program to be able to find information that was relevant and you know, of interest to beekeepers and stakeholders. So if you want to learn more about the Atlantic Positive Project and the Asian Hornet, I've included some resources here. I collaborated with Colette O'Connell from the Irish Beekeeper Association to give an update on the current situation in Ireland and just give a bit more information on the project itself. And Peter Kenzie, a project partner in the University of Exeter, gave a fantastic talk about the research being done in mainland Europe and in the UK on the Asian Hornet. Our social media handles are included and we've released a lot of resources this week to provide information about the Hornet. And I've also included resources from other projects or institutes not related to the project. However, I just think they're very interesting and they're, they're really useful to use. So, as I said, the first Hornet was reported in Ireland in April of this year. It was found in Dublin, uh, very close to the Dublin port within five kilometres. For an Asian Hornet, particularly for a fertilised queen that has just come out of hibernation and is looking for a nest, that's really, really easy for them to travel that distance. However, the hornet itself was found in a state of a life but dying. It was, and as you can see from these pictures, which is the hornet in question, in almost perfect condition, which indicates that it most likely was accidentally brought in through imports rather than flying here. Due to the time of year it was found, it is presumed female as well. 
And unfortunately, it, it's quite hard to dictate uh, the pathway that it came in. And I'm sure, I'm sure Brian would probably give more information on this as well. But what we have done is we've done a genetic analysis of the hornet, and it shows that the hornet originated from a European population. It was not a new introduction from its native range in Asia. So it was 100% matched with the Channel Islands DNA. Uh, this doesn't mean that it came from the Channel Islands. Um, however, the Channel Island population came from Europe. So we can, you know, we can confidently say that this is, a, a, you know, an introduction from a European population, not a new one from its native range. There's still a lot of work that we want to do on this, and there's a lot of work on the project in general that that we're um, that you know we're working on at the moment, and we're uh, really excited about. And just for um, our presenters begin, this is just an overview of what the Asian hornet looks like. So they have a very distinctive orange face with dark antennae. And they have yellow tipped legs, which give them the name the yellow legged hornet. Maybe slightly easier to identify them that way. Uh, they have an entirely dark or brown thorax. However, they have an orange segment on their abdomen that, again, just helps them stand out. We don't have any hornets in Ireland, so there's not you know hornets that they can be confused with. However, there are plenty of native species that they can be confused for. So upcoming events. We are organizing two webinars for October. We're still in the organization phase, so the speakers and the time and date are to be announced. We're also running an international congress on the 17th and 18th of November. It's going to be a really, really interesting event. We have talks from guest speakers in the UK, France, Italy, USA and New Zealand. You don't need to register for the event. You just need to follow the link, which we will provide closer to the time. Uh, I've included my email in case anyone wants to get in contact. And I just want to say before we begin, a special thank you to Colette, Brian and Declan for taking the time to be involved today. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll hand it over to Colette now. Thank you, Rachel. So I'm just going to share my screen now. OK, I hope everybody can see that. OK, is that all right, Rachel? Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Claire. Wonderful. So thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, yes, yeah, so look, just over the next 10 minutes, I will introduce you to reporting sightings of Asian Hornet to the National Biodiversity Data Centre. So just a bit on how to report them and what happens when you do report those sightings. And again, like why, why should you report them to begin with? Well, Asian Hornet is a regulated species across Europe and non-native to Ireland. And if it did arrive here and um, establish and spread, it has the potential to be an invasive species, as Rachel outlined. Uh, early detection of Asian Hornet provides the best chance for rapid response actions to reduce the risk of them establishing or spreading. So really detecting them as soon as possible is key to the whole response. Reporting your sighting, it enables a review of that sighting to confirm it and to confirm its identity. And this then will, of course, does support detection and response actions. Where to report your sightings? Well, to the National Biodiversity Data Centre, and I'll give you some more detail on that. Or if you have an apiary, so you're a beekeeper and you want to report an Asian hornet sighting or have concerns um, regarding the bee health, contact the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine at beekeeping at agriculture.gov.ie. Uh, Declan will talk more about that later, but and particularly on the protocols for reporting, I suppose you'll be aware of if you're involved in the Sentinel Surveillance uh, Programme or the Asian Hornet Monitoring Programme. Um, but look, I suppose the most important thing to remember is if you suspect seeing an Asian hornet to just please report it, uh, regardless of where that goes. But this is how we prefer you, you streamline those reports. Um, and just to say sightings for Northern Ireland should be redirected to them there. Here is a link. Um, there's the Asian Hornet app, watch app that they use there, or just contact the non-native species team in the Northern Ireland Environment Agency. how to report your Asian Hornet sighting to the data centre? Well, how we would prefer you do it is either through the app, so that's the Biodiversity Data Capture app available on Android or iOS, or through the online recording form at records.biodiversityireland.ie start recording. This is what you will see and just to click on the one that says invasive species. 
when you do submit your sighting, what happens? Well, we have a series of steps under our invasive species record alert system. That's for all of our species we tag for alert. So species not, not yet here in Ireland or with a rare occurrence that we do need to hear of um, almost immediately if they have been detected. So I'll just go through those steps very quickly. So you're a field recorder, you know, you've been out there, you're, you're anybody, you've spotted a, an Asian hornet. So you're either going to submit that sighting through the app or through the online recording form. And what they ask you to submit really is just the who, what, when and where, who recorded it, what was recorded, so the Asian hornet, when being the date and where, so location information. And either the app and the online form will also help you in retrieving coordinates for that sighting which will be very important when we do need to help with verification and response. And also both of them have that option of attaching a photograph, which is vitally important if you can get one. Once you submit that through the app or the online form, um, I receive an email within one hour of that being submitted. So on the hour it filters through the system for any tagged alert submissions. I get it in the form of an email and basically, this is what it includes, the who, what, when and where, um, who recorded it, what, when and where. Your photograph that you'll attach comes to me as a link so I can quickly have a look at that photo. Uh, in this instance, it was a giant wood wasp that was submitted. Once I look at that and open up the alert that has been sent and your sighting information will work straight away to try and verify that sighting. So look, the photo has been attached. I will look at that and see, OK, look, does this look like it could be an Asian hornet? Is there some concern? If there is, then I would contact the relevant species expert to kind of see, do they also have concern that this could be an Asian hornet and to follow on and further verification if needs be. Often it's a case that I would have to go back to the recorder. So if a photo hasn't been submitted, you know, do you have one? Uh, have you retained a specimen by any chance? Is there any other information about the sighting that could help us? figure out if it was an Asian hornet or not. So sometimes there's a bit of over and back. If the species has been verified, your sighting, well, the relevant authorities are notified of that. In the case of Asian hornet, it's often a case that the verifying that the authorities that need to know about it are also the ones that would have the expertise to confirm its identity, such as Dr. Nelson in the National Parks and Wildlife Service and Declan Harty and his colleagues in the Department of Agriculture. Um, and of course, then we also would seek the entomology experience of the National Museum of Ireland. So once it has been verified and the authorities have been alerted, you know, it is for them then to trigger the appropriate response actions that need to be taken to the Asian Hornet. And for the data centre, we will, of course, then always work to make information as freely available as possible. So to date, what has been happening for submitted sightings? Well, um, from the alert system, this is just a log of sightings we've received since 2016. So 2016, 17 and 18, just six sightings per year. Um, 2019, 11 were submitted. In 2020, we had a jump to 49 sightings, but a significant increase this year with 123 submitted sightings so far. Um, and I think this has to do with, you look, an increased awareness of the risks of Asian hornet and concerns about them. And particularly with this first identified individual confirmed back in April, and that there is the photo as received to the data center um, of that Asian hornet. Just to say, I suppose these figures of reported sightings, you know, they are just the ones from the alert system. So through the app or the online form, they're not the ones receiving email. And we do receive them by email, but the alert it kind of has triggers this email that goes to myself and another colleague should I be on leave. So it's really kind of a backup system. We have all the information available at hand that we need to make that initial assessment. So it is the preferred way to submit them. And just to say out of all these reported suspected sightings, we, we have had just that one confirmed individual this year. So what are we receiving if they're not Asian hornets? Um, these are kind of the top ones. So giant wood wasp by far is the majority where we can confirm it. Um, then other sawflies such as the Cyrix genus. Um, and you can probably see why these are large and the giant wood wasp would be larger than an Asian hornet. And if you're not familiar with seeing them in Ireland, then you know you do see this large thing that has a mostly dark body with yellow legs. 
um, and you could think, OK, look, this looks like the Asian Hornet and you need to report it. Um, however, I just want to point out one thing. While the Asian Hornet does sting, normally stinger is not visible. Um, and what these have at the end of them, these saw flies are not a stinger, but a, an ovipositor that is used to lay eggs. Um, and so often people see this and are quite alarmed. And that's what will trigger concern that it could be an Asian Hornet and they report it. And then we just also get wasp reports of common wasps, particularly of queens when they're emerging. And this year, um, and, and quite unusually, we're getting a lot of dark giant horsefly uh, sightings as suspected Asian hornets. And what this indicates to us is that really we do need to make good identification materials available and also information on what they could be confused with. What I would say to anybody, of course, is look, if you have a suspected sighting, please do submit it with, it, with a photograph if possible. Um, but ahead of that, you know, and, and before we do have Asian hornets here again, um, is to take the time to look at the information materials that are there to become familiar with their identification features and what they could be confused with. Even go on YouTube and look for, for videos where you see them in flight just to kind of get your eye in, because that will be the most important thing that you will know what the features are because often it could be just a chance encounter is where you're seeing the Asian Hornet if it's not caught in perhaps a, a hive trap or something like that. Um, Rachel and her colleagues in Atlantic Positive have put together a short video on how to report sightings to the data center in this alert system. So you can check that out and um, it should be up on YouTube later on today. And just thank you very much for your attention. Perfect. Thank you so much, Colette. Uh, I would just like to remind everyone that you can ask questions um, in the um, the conversation or the meeting chat option, which should be at the top of the screen. So now I'm going to hand over to Brian Nelson um, from the National Parks and Wildlife Services. Thank you, Rachel, and uh, thank you, Colette, as well, for that excellent opening. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to share my screen now. Right. So, um, as as Rachel uh, introduced me, um, I work for National Parks and Wildlife Service. I'm in the Science and Biodiversity Unit. So, I, I'm a research uh, biologist, and I have responsibility for uh, all invertebrate species, uh, bar one or two land land and terrestrial invertebrate species. Um, so I'm just going to give you some context of what MPWS uh, views about the um, or, or actions and views about the Asian Hornet and talk about the uh, occurrence in 2021. Hopefully it won't be too repetitive what we've heard already. Uh, that's no criticism of Rachel or Colette. It's, it's, it's um, just the way it goes. So uh, first of all, just the context of invasive species because it is very important to um, recognise that this and, and MPWS are, are increasingly concerned about invasive species. They are now recognised as one of the main drivers of biodiversity loss globally, um, either um, by their impact on biodiversity or um, economically. Invasive species aren't just biodiversity loss, they are economic loss as well. Um, so species may be introduced to an area where they where they directly impact human activity and cause economic loss. And so within that context, um, Ireland, just like anywhere else in the globe, uh, but Europe in particular is, is particularly prone to, or has particularly suffered from um, invasive species. And the problem is becoming more and more common. There are more and more species all the time in my in my own group uh, I, I cover freshwater crayfish and that has been impacted by a invasive species now in this case it's a disease um that is inadvertently carried by another species so the the complexity of invasive species um can be quite uh there can be quite a lot of complexity in the in the in the impact the invasive species has it can be carrying in disease or it can be direct. Uh, the arrival of these species, however, does involve human beings at some point, and it's either through in deliberate and direct introduction 
as, for example, freshwater crayfish were imported from America into Europe in the 1880s, 1800s rather, they inadvertently brought a disease and it is a disease that actually caused the major impact of those species. Or you can get then natural spread from, from areas, and this is what we're seeing with the hornet. So the, the, the introduction point is in country X, that population builds up and species do not recognize borders uh, and they spread naturally. Now, in Ireland, we obviously have a slight advantage. We are a offshore island. They've got to get through Britain usually, though they could come directly from the continent. But usually the species will go into Britain and then spread westwards into Ireland. So we do have a slight advantage in that we have sea barriers to do it. But uh, species do not recognise Ireland as a concept. I mean, Ireland as a concept, remember, and the governance of Ireland is, is a human thing. So um, species are they're not deliberately coming to Ireland or anything. But it, it you know that, that may say a very, very flippant point, but it, it is it is something that. Uh, we, we are imposing a human governance on a on a biological system that may not, which makes control very, very difficult. So controlling arrival of those species involves controlling those activities really. And that then poses legal and societal issues. And um, we have all lived through this the last two years with COVID, the issues that are, we all have encountered with COVID really Invasive species are part of that thing. And and COVID, you can also um, say, is actually an invasive biological species. So prevention of arrival is the key. But that then poses great problems because we live within the context of the free, the, the single market and the free movement. But as Colette has, Colette has alluded to, once established, the experience of most places is that eradication becomes extremely difficult. So you really do want to have uh, the species not arriving. And we also have to recognize that a lot of what human activity is done within the landscape does actually make it more prone to invasion by non-native species. And a robust natural system is known to be more resistant to non-natives. So that, that can be one thing that within policy we have to recognize. A lot of non-native species will concentrate on urban areas, parks, gardens, that sort of thing. They then invade more na natural things, but the, the most natural, the more natural the habitat, the more resistant it is to not is, because there are other species there which act as controls or natural competitors or predators. Uh, within within the existing government, um, the development of a national plan for invasive alien species is included in the programme equivalent, and that has become a priority for MPWS. MPWS is the competent authority, and we have the primary responsibility for legislation and policy in the invasive species. It is a it is a biological biodiversity issue. However. If you think back to what I was saying, that the entry of species into Ireland involves the control of activities that MPWS does not have any say over, we, we obviously need cooperation. So it, though MPWS is, is the top of the pyramid, that it does involve close cooperation. And we will hear, we'll hear from Declan um, how, how the, the DAFM are, are doing. But it is a cooperative thing. We're not, we, we cannot, it cannot be taken in isolation by MPWS nor equally by other departments. And one of the things the programme said is, the, is this national plan. Um, we do need increased resources to do that. And that is an issue that is being addressed at the moment within the department and government. So once that is addressed, then hopefully we'll focus uh, resources, skill sets and expertise so we can properly deal with these issues of of invasive species, not just the Asian hornet, but lots of other species. So to go back to the, to the species, MPWS fully recognizes the threat posed by this species. It is, yes, a high risk invasive species. However, we do have to be also cognizant of the fact that it's not established yet in Great Britain. Yes, it is established on the Channel Islands in France and, and on the continent. 
And that does still give us a bit of time. And as I say, the sea does provide us with a bit of a barrier for natural spread. The, it, it, if the species is going to spread naturally to Ireland, it has to get across the Irish Sea. We don't know what sea movement it is. But the experience of most invasive species is that human intervention, human mediation, mediated transport is what is bringing it in. So it is most likely that this species will come in through accidental stowaway in, trans in, in transport systems. Colette described the alert system and it is working very, very well, but we have to be proportional uh, and we don't want to be crying wolf and overaction is to be avoided. And, and, and MPWS are, are concerned that, you know, the, the, this is not to, this is not to um, say that people can't alert us, but you know, so the, the, the false alarms we are getting in itself can use up time and resource. So we have to be aware of that as well. So the 2021 occurrence is accepted as genuine. And uh, the person who reported it did not genuinely know what it was. Um, there is no reason to assume the circumstances were not as described or as we could find out, but it is still unclear exactly how the species arrived. There are several possibilities, but it'll never probably be known. Now, as Rachel explained, the, we do at least have the reassurance that this did not come from a Chinese population. It wasn't a reintroduction from Eastern Asia. It has likely to be a European thing. So it is likely to fall into the pathways that I've talked about, come in through a transport link, whether that was by air, by lorry or sea, but it has involved a transport link linkage to Ireland. And that's where we need to um, target our action and Declan will be explaining this this on. So once the, the the species was identified, a meeting was held with um, relevant organizations and we have come up with a plan that deals proportionately with what, what the threat is. There, the, the species itself was dead, so there was no risk of a colony being present. There's been no other records of Asian hornets. Though this this is the time of year when when that is most likely to be reported. So far, we've had no reports. So we we are as confident as we can be that there is no established population yet of Asian hornet in Ireland, and hopefully that will always be the case. Um, but when it comes to issues like control, MPWS are not in a position themselves within their staff to do that so we will have to we will have to have a specialist service that will do that and that is something that we will be working on in the next few in the next uh, while in the context of this national invasive species plan so that we are prepared whenever and hopefully it will be several years before it it, it does happen but if if and when a nest is found we will have it uh, we will have in position a a plan to do it uh, that's all I think I need to say on the thing. I hopefully you all heard this. Um, that's one of the things of these online talks. You don't know whether people actually can hear what you're saying, but uh, I shall now hopefully stop sharing and hand back to Rachel. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, we definitely heard you anyway. Um, and you made some really good points that, you know, um, controlling invasive species is a cooperative, um, you know, is a cooperative uh you know, event really. So uh, I'm going to hand this over to Declan Harsey now, who's the Agriculture Inspector in the Department of Agriculture. Okay, thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Brian and Colette. Um, yeah, just load the presentation now. Just bear with me. No, yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, I suppose as um, Rachel said, uh, my name is Declan Harty. I'm an Agriculture Inspector at the Department of Agriculture in the Horticulture and Plant Health section. And uh, within within the that division, we have the beekeeping and honey section. Um, and beekeeping and honey uh, is is a say our remit there within uh, Department of Agriculture. This is just uh, I suppose another picture that from one of our fact sheets there on our website of the Asian Hornet. Um, I won't stop too long on this. Uh, we've we've had some great pictures this morning already. Um, but uh, again, look, there's there's plenty of material as well on on our uh, web page as well on gov.ie. 
within the Department of Agriculture, as I say, we have the beekeeping honey section. Um, just to give you context, I suppose, about our um, the work we carry out here uh, and where we're based. We're based um, just outside Selbridge on the Back Western campus there, um, where we have Department of Agriculture, the Department of Culture Labs and the State Labs. Um, Barry Delaney is our head of division in plant health and um, myself and uh, um, Redmond McAvoy uh, work together on uh, beekeeping and honey. So a lot of us beekeepers that may be listening to this would know Redmond quite well if they're taking part in the central program. Um, I suppose further to that then, we're supported by regional inspectors who carry out an annual food safety and authenticity inspection program on honey at apiaries, packers and retailers. Um, as well as that, um, at Back Weston, um, we have uh, Dr. Mary Coffey, who oversees the Daffin uh, Bee Health Laboratory. Um, so we're very lucky since uh, 2019 that that facility has moved over to Daffin and that Mary is overseeing that work. Um, in addition to that, then we have uh, Robin Earl, who is the Daffin entomologist. So I suppose that just gives you an insight to the team, I suppose, and the resources that are available within Daffin uh, for this. Um, as I say, we have uh, a lot of interactions with beekeepers, and that's why this uh, Sentinel AP program that I'll discuss in a moment, uh, I suppose it makes sense that it sits within DAFM. Um, so DAFM supports beekeeping to a number of initiatives, including the provision of a free disease diagnostic service for Irish beekeepers. And as I say, that's through the lab there with uh, Dr. Mary Coffey. So we'd always encourage beekeepers to send any samples that they've any queries over into the, into the lab. Um, that's a free service. Uh, we also um, uh, was the National Apiculture Programme as well is run through DAFM. Um, we provide aid to support the activities of the National Beekeeping Associations and organisations, provision of grant aid for capital investments by individual beekeepers and specialised beekeeping related equipment and structures. We also uh, provide funding for a number of studies under the Genetic Research Grant Aid Scheme, looking at various aspects of uh, Avis, Mellifera, and Mellifera. DAFM is also partnering the All Ireland uh, Pollinator Plan and the uh, member of the All Ireland uh, Honey Bee Strategy Steering Group. So say that's just to give the background to DAFM's uh, interaction with beekeepers and the sector. The uh, Central Apiary Programme, so this is the, I suppose, standing programme that was established in 2015. Um, it was developed with the assistance of our colleagues in DERA in Northern Ireland and AFI, the Agri-Food and Bioscience Institute. Uh, this was, I suppose, uh, developed on an all-island basis. Um, so in they, they would have a, a similar program in, in Northern Ireland. Um, the, the initial program, or I suppose the aim of the program is to ensure the early detection of three exotic pests, small hive beetle, trouble elapse, and Asian hornet. Now, initially in 2015, Asian hornet wasn't included. Um, however, it was included then from 2016 onwards, I suppose, following the first um, or from, from sighting in Great Britain. So um, the program op operates uh, with volunteer beekeepers look at located 25 sites around Ireland. These sites were selected on risk basis and are located around entry points in Ireland with direct access to mainland Europe, including ports and airports, as well as along major distribution networks. So we're looking at a risk basis to try and identify, look, what are the most uh, likely uh, entry sites of Asian Hornet into Ireland and have our sentinel sites based there. Um, volunteers use two of their hives as monitoring hives. So each volunteer is provided with a kit to facilitate their monitoring. The kits include training materials, small hive beetle traps, Asian hornet traps, sampling equipment, and pre-made envelopes to samples for sample submission. The volunteers also maintain a simple sentinel apiary log to record their activities and to submit samples to the department as part of the monitoring program. Um, I suppose for 2021 to look following, we, I suppose the start of this year, we would have uh, spoke to beekeepers that took part in the program to see how can we improve this program uh, to aid beekeepers. So in 2021, we've introduced uh, for each sample submission, a sample report will be sent to each individual beekeeper. Uh, for beekeepers convenience and, and to enhance the program, samples will also be checked for VROA. And at the end of the 2021 program report and the results of the program will be published on the DAPM website. And we're always happy to get new volunteers for the program. It's basically a one year rolling program. So you volunteers can just commit to one year. They can stay on for several years. It's totally up to them. But if anyone, I suppose, listening in would like to uh, volunteer for the program, uh, please email us at beekeeping at agriculture.gov.ie. So this is just uh, a map to illustrate the, I suppose, uh, uh, the different sites and uh, around the country. Um, so this map represents, I suppose, the as part of that risk analysis, um, the 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 various sites around Ireland that um, have been identified. Now, doesn't this doesn't represent where the actual um, 
current Sentinel sites are, these are possible sites. Um, so as you can see, if you move around, we'll say from County Loud, you've Green Ore there, the Port of Green Ore, you've North County Open Swords, where there's a lot of distribution centres, Dublin Airport, Dublin Port, down to Ross Lair, Waterford, uh, Corport, um, up to Shannon Airport and Foynes, Galway City, Knock Airport, and back up to Sligo. And then through the country then, I suppose if sites located near um, distribution hubs or I suppose major networks through arteries throughout Ireland. So again, you're trying to have a proportionate representative as a program to try and as, as an early warning system um, for, for those three uh, exotic pests and diseases. So um, that, that is, I suppose, our standing program with the Sentinel APRI program. But in response to the discovery of a single Asian hornet in a home carriage on the north side of Dublin on the 25th of April 2021, additional Asian hornet traps were set up in Dublin 3, around Dublin City and County. Uh, this monitoring is solely focused on Asian hornet. This is in addition to the Sentinel APRI program and DAFM's Asian hornet monitoring at Dublin Airport, Dublin Port and Rossley Airport, where we have our own, uh, or DAFM staff have, we have our own uh, traps that are monitored on an ongoing basis. Um, Asian Hornet Monitoring Programme involves 24 participants, including volunteer beekeepers, Dublin City Council, the Office of Public Works, Transport Infrastructure Ireland, and Distribution Hubs. Uh, these participants have sites over multiple locations across the city and county. And additional sites have been set up at Corport, County Wexford, and County Kildare. So I suppose just to acknowledge uh, the, the volunteers to date, look, it's really appreciated. We can't operate this programme uh, successfully without all the volunteers and, you know, the beekeepers in Dublin and around the country and um, we got great support this year from Dublin City Council and um, they linked in with a lot of sites and apries um, on, in their parks uh, around the city as well as the Office of Public Works and uh, Transport Infrastructure Ireland so just to I suppose uh, mention um, everyone there and the beekeepers um, that you know as I say it's 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 all on a voluntary basis and um, the map there just uh, I suppose just gives an indication of um, the red is Dublin 3, as you can see there where there's the little ship arriving into Dublin port. So that's where the Asian Hornet was discovered. Um, so, you know, our sampling, as I say, it's covering Dublin 3, but also around Dublin city and county, um, you know, uh, be it at OPW sites around the Phoenix Park and other sites, as well as at Apries um, in parks and um, uh, shared gardens or, um, so we really try to get as good a coverage across the city as possible and, um, and, and the county as well, um, up into North County Dublin. Um, as you can see there, you've got Dublin Airport and then you've got you know, a major distribution hub as well across North County Dublin. So again, it's that risk basis that we've approached uh, sampling sites. Um, so this is the FESPA catch for Asian Hornet. Um, so look, there are several different uh, types of traps. This is one of the traps we have. We have a different trap as well that's used this year. Uh, the tra trap is used from the beginning of July to the end of October. The yellow bowl uh, color cup is known to attract Asian hornets. Uh, the trap lid provides two entrances, both covered with a tunnel that uh, focuses and directs odors, shields, ambient light, and prevents hornets from escaping. Uh, the Vespa catch utilizes a special attractant or lure as a base, and we recommend that this is renewed every three to four weeks. Uh, for better efficiency, do not clean the trap during the renewal of the solution. And uh, again, look, if a sighting of the Asian horse is suspected trapped, uh, we ask that people contact uh, that are part of this program that they contact staff from a beekeeping agriculture.gov.ie and if possible, if they can include a photograph and all suspect uh, specimens should be submitted to staff from plant health laboratories for confirmation. And yeah, just finally then, just to, just to say again, look, um, it's, it's the beekeepers of Ireland here that are the key element to the Asian hornet monitoring. Um, while a reported structured trapping and surveillance system is one of the main components in the ongoing response to Asian Hornet, uh, the ongoing visual monitoring of highs by keepers for Asian Hornet activity is equally as important. Um, I know Clet uh, mentioned that there this morning as well, you know, and there's lots of great material available online, you know, in relation to the flight of the Asian Hornet and, and science look out for at your um, And I'd just like to acknowledge the ex excellent work carried out by the Beekeeping Association of Ireland in raising awareness of Asian Hornet to date. And just finally, just to say again, look, if anyone would like to volunteer uh, for the Central APRI program or the Asian Hornet Monitoring program, uh, please contact us at, at DAF from the beekeeping at agriculture.gov.ie. 
Um, look, we're always happy to, to you know, we, we'll have a standby list of additional volunteers um, and we really do try to accommodate anyone who's interested in taking part in the programme. And also as well, for further information in relation to Asian Hornet, um, as well as any other beekeeping matters, if you go to gov.ie and just type in beekeeping, it'll bring you to our beekeeping page that has all the relevant information, including fact sheets on the Asian Hornet, uh, submitting samples, and as well as the Central Apia programme. Um, okay, so thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Declan. That's really, uh, it's great to see what's being done, especially around Dublin area since the first Hornet was uh, reported there. So we do have time for some questions. Um, we did have the, the option when registering to ask some questions, but there is also the, um, the conversation or chat feature as well, where you can put uh, any, comments or any comments or questions that you have now. So I think the first one um, may be most suited for Declan would be, are there traps that don't catch other insects? Um, I suppose there are, I suppose, dry traps, but they'll all catch other insects. I suppose the thing is you can perhaps decide to use the non-liquid lure. Um, and in that sense, you'd have to monitor the trap uh, quite regularly every 24 hours and then be in a position to release you know, the bike catch. Um, but I suppose that's something we're very conscious of, and that's why as they go back to the kind of proportionate and structured approach with trapping that, you know, uh, the equally uh, monitoring highs visually can be just important for beekeepers, you know, and, and it's, it's, that, it's that mix. Um, but there are various traps available out there, and it's something look, that we'd be looking at as we, you know, continue to develop the program going forward. Yeah, that is part of the research that some of the project partners are looking at, is that is there baited traps that will only, you know, target the Asian hornet. So there is a lot of research going into that at the moment. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, I think the next question would be um, kind of, there's a few, I might just make them into the one question. Um, I suppose, Brian, maybe if you want to answer this, but obviously it's open to the rest of you as well. So how soon will the Asian hornet arrive in Ireland and where do you think it will come from? Oh, that's a that's a very that's a very difficult question because um, yeah, I, I, as as I tried to indicate, you know, it, it it will depend on 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 large populations building up. If it was going to arrive here naturally, I think you'll have to have a large population build up in Britain, um, and that's not it's not present on the mainland of Great Britain, as far as I know. Uh, yes, it's in the Channel Islands. Um, the risk to Ireland. Is more likely to be from accidental stowaway tra uh, transmission through the ports, and uh, as Declan has outlined, that that's why the um, Sentinel program is really concentrating on, on on those sort of areas where this is likely to happen. And of course, that could happen at any time, but there will be times a year when it is most likely to happen. I when when the Queen's um, it, it it will only happen by a Queen arriving. Uh, it will not happen by a worker arriving or a, anything like that. It has to be a queen because she can then find a colony. And therefore, the risk time is presumably worse whenever the queens are looking for somewhere to hibernate, which, as I understand it, happens fairly quickly after the nest breaks up. Uh, the queens do not do not travel far. I mean, why, why would a queen travel all the way to Ireland to, to hibernate? That, that's not going to happen. Uh, unless she gets brought there. So whatever she hibernates in, it then gets moved to Ireland. Uh, and, and that's how it obviously got to France in the first place, we think. So uh, that's a very long-winded answer. It could be next year. It could be 10 years. Or it could be never. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one to answer, all right. Uh, I, I do think it leads really nicely into this next question, though. And if it's all right, I, I'll just answer this. So how far has the Asian hornet spread in Great Britain and Ireland? So as we've talked about today, uh, there was only the single Asian hornet that was found in Ireland. Um, and as Brian has already said, that that single individual did die. So there's no possibility of a colony being established um, from that specimen. However, in Great Britain, there has been, I think it's about 19 uh, different reports and 10 of those have been nests. However, they're all individual incursions. So uh, the Asian hornet isn't established in Great Britain. Um, the nests that are found are located in southern England, um, but they have all been destroyed before it gets to the point where the nest can produce 
uh, you know, queens that can, you know, start a new colony. There's great videos by Nigel Simmons and Dr. Eleanor Jones on the British Beekeepers uh, YouTube channel that I keep mentioning, but they're just really, really good um, videos, really informative. And they go through uh, the locations and what they're doing to stop the spread of the Asian hornet or stop them from establishing. But so far, those nests have been quite small and um, they haven't you know, got to the point where they've been able to reproduce um, and no nest has been linked to a nest before, you know, the year before the colony, uh, the year after, they're not genetically related. So um, I think there's a question here now um, for Declan, just on the traps, is there a solution um, or compromise and if, sorry, of, and is there much bycatch? Is there much bycatch? Mm -hmm. um, well, I suppose for this year, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't have figures on that, to be honest with you. Um, uh, this year, we've asked the participants of the Sentinel Apia Program actually to submit the whole uh, contents of it to us so we can analyze it, uh, whereas previously we would have just asked them to uh, send in samples, you know, the individual uh, suspect specimens. So probably after this year, we'll have a better idea of, you know, the level by the catch in those and the species that are found in it. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it would be an issue, of course, you know. Yeah. And another question then, um, I think Colette, if you want to answer this, but again, it's just open to everyone. Um, how can we best protect our Atlantic shores from the Asian hornet? Um, how can we deter the pest within our own gardens? That's a very good question, a long question. I suppose, how can we protect our shores from it? I, I don't know. I suppose I imagine anybody that's kind of going abroad and coming back, just check any kind of luggage and vehicles. If you, you know, if you see anything um, just to kind of remove any insects and things like that. But in general, it's that's monumental. The amount of cargo and traffic and everything and people and goods moving into Ireland, it's going to be very difficult to prevent any kind of hitchhikers that incidental um chance of a queen hibernating on something and being accidentally brought over um within our own gardens look it, it's something like in our own areas again if you have any for if you are part of the sentinel program um to, to kind of join that if you're in a position to do so and just becoming familiar with what the asian hornet looks like its identification features as again i said maybe looking at videos to kind of get your eye in and what it looks like um in, in flight and that and just if you do suspect seeing one to report it again, you know, we, we would need something to go on. So a photograph if possible. And um, if there is an opportunity to safely retain a live specimen, great. If it just so happens to be killed by your cat or something, take a photo again, retain the specimen. But it really, it is just about being vigilant and, you know, and reporting suspected sightings. But again, we would ask because of the volume of sightings we're receiving already um, and what we envisage we could receive down the line. It is about really to kind of taking time, you know, to, to think about, okay, is this actually possibly an Asian hornet or not? Um, and particularly before killing anything, if you're in a position to do that. Yeah. 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 And I think as well, it kind of follows just other invasive species. Just be, be aware when you're coming back. Uh, I know there was one brought into the UK from a family that were camping in France. Now, the hornet was was dead um, in the tent. However, it's just, you know, that kind of be aware of what you're bringing back with you. Make sure, um, you know, you're cleaning your equipment as well. Um, anything like that, you know, just to do invasive species in general uh, is really important. So we just have um, an observation from John, which I imagine is John de Carthright from uh, the Jersey Asian Hornet Group. So he says, we don't use the satchels um, of attractants that come with the traps. We have found trap it liquid to be the most effective. So... Uh, and then, oh, we actually have another question saying, what is the attractant use in traps in Ireland? So that kind of, I suppose, leads into that. Yeah, I suppose in, yeah, in Ireland there, it's, um, I suppose, the, the commercial, there's um, lure provided in sachet form as well as sugar. Um, I don't actually have to hand what's what's in that sachet. Um, so that's something to come back to you on. Um, so if um, that person just wants to email beekeeping at culture.gov.e, we'll get back with the information to them. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of homemade traps you can use as well. I think it's um, Bee Base in the UK. They have a great video, uh, they have a great YouTube video and a, I suppose, a PDF um, showing how to make traps. But again, as we've said, they're not targeted towards the Asian Hornet. 
So they would have to be monitored very regularly to make sure that there's no bycatch. Yeah. So really at this point, I think observation is, is key um, for, for Ireland to get everyone out there, to get everyone aware. So Simon, I see your hand up. So I am going to unmute you. Thank, thank you, Rachel. You unmute yourself. Perfect. <laughs> thank you, Rachel, very much. I might. Uh, it's kind of a part question, part observation. But uh, from what we we know a little bit about the the Vespa uh, in Europe and in Ireland is that it probably will will get here at some stage. Uh, it already has done, as it has got to the UK. What you said about the UK Vespa is very important. Is that the nests discovered come from new, fresh arrivals? They're not breeding from previous ones. So that's why it hasn't established. The reason for that is probably because it has been suggested climatically the UK uh, is not really suitable for Vespa. If that is the case, then Ireland very much so is, is less suited climatically. So really my, my observation would be that care with trapping. Um, Vespa hasn't arrived, hasn't established in Ireland. What I wouldn't want to see is lots of people out there trapping lots of insects uh, to try to see if they catch Vespa, uh, because the, the bycatch would be unnecessary and, and damaging. So I think what you're, what you're saying about observation, let's observe living insects rather than trapping lots of dead insects. And I, I, that's my sort of uh, uh, an idea I have. I wonder what the, the panel would think of that. Should we start sentinel trapping? And I don't believe so. What what do you think? Yeah, if I, I come in there, Simon, because I think that, that that's the thing I touched on in, in, in my talk. At, yeah, we, we, we yeah, we do need to be proportionate. Um and and yes, random trapping all over the over the country and uh, it is not needed. Um, and, and Declan has, has outlined you know, how targeted the, the sentinel trapping is. And, and, and of course, the Asian horn is, is mostly recognized as a, as a predator of um, honeybees. So honeybees clearly are, the, are an animal that they, they, want, they want to hunt because w w this, this does need fairly large insect prey. And, and again, that would be something that would perhaps limit, limit its um, potential here in Ireland for spread, spreading and establishment. Um, we don't have a large, diverse insect fauna and climatic view in every suitable. So, yeah, you're entirely right, Simon. It, it needs observation. Um, str strangely, COVID has, has has actually probably made, made observations of of the wood wasp, the, the, the species that is most often um, misidentified as the Asian hornet, uh, more common because I think People have been working from home. They've got wood stores, and these things are coming out of wood stores. And we, we in the MPWS, we get a lot of reports of, of, of these animals. Um, and and also people should also, please, please be when when you go on the internet and you and you search for Asian hornet, you will get lots of terrifying pictures of, another species that which is the Vespa mandarina, um. Please ignore those those things. That 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 is not the species we're talking about. What we're talking about is a, is a different species. Yes, it is a big insect, uh, and that that really is what I what I find with people. Whenever 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 you actually do see a real hornet, in a, an Irish person sees a real hornet, they will think, "Gosh, I've never seen an insect that big before in Ireland," and and that is the first thing that strikes you about hornets, in my view. Yeah, I think that's that's really important as well, just to, as you both said, really to keep this in context and that, you know, we don't want to be harming any of our native species. Uh, I think it was Aidan O'Hanlon uh, gave a great talk a few weeks ago about our native solitary um, wasps. Uh, it, it was really good because, you know, animals or insects that people, you know, see they're big, they might look scary, but they're actually very important for our biodiversity in Ireland. So, yeah, at this point, just really important to, you know, become aware of, of the species around you, which in itself is great because, you know, you're just learning more about Ireland. Uh, but I think that's it for today, guys, because we've just gone over two o'clock and I don't want to keep this going on for too long. So just again, thank you to everyone who's attended today and thank you to our speakers, Brian Nelson, Declan Harty and Colette O'Flynn for taking the time uh, to talk about the Asian Hornet and what we're doing in Ireland to manage it. Um, there'll be more information and this video will become available on our social media handles. Um, just look up Atlantic Positive. I can't think of what the handles are now off the top of my head. 
Um, and this will be made available on our website, atlanticpositive.eu, and potentially on Biodiversity Ireland's website as well, or one of the government websites. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, this is us signing off until next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.